All right, hello again, crew. Mr. Tribble here. All right, uh, today we're going to talking about um, natural and artificial selection. Now we covered this a little bit in class, but we're going a little bit more in depth uh, with it with this little podcast here. Uh, the teak we're covering is 711C. The learner will identify some changes in genetic traits that have occurred over several generations through natural selection and selective breeding, such as the Galapagos medium ground finch or domestic animals. Now. Uh, we covered the very basics of natural and artificial selection in class, but I get to go a little bit more in-depth with it now that I'm on YouTube, so here we go. Um, first off, natural selection. Follow me if you will. Here we have some green and brown bugs. Now, if these little bugs hang out on trees, the green ones are going to show up more than the brown ones do. So along come the birds. They come down, they yum nom 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 nom, eat up the green birds, and you're left... <laughs> I just said they eat up the green birds. They eat up the green bugs, and you're left with way more brown bugs. Of course, the reproduction occurs, and you get way more brown bugs because the green bugs have died off. This is just the easiest example of natural selection here. Those with beneficial traits to their ecosystem are the ones that survive. But as we talked about in class, beneficial, that word beneficial traits, are really subjective. It's like they're unique to each ecosystem. What will help you out a whole lot in the Arctic might kill you in the desert. And so what is beneficial is really situational and dependent on your ecosystem. Um, Darwin was the fellow that made this uh, whole uh, idea famous, Charles Darwin. Uh, you, might, you may have heard of Origin of the Species. Uh, well, the idea of natural selection came from his uh, cataloging and collecting specimens, and most specifically these Galapagos finches. Now, these were birds that lived on the Galapagos Islands, and, well, still do. Um, but they live in sort of different ecosystems. Like, as you go around the islands, you end up with different kinds of birds that eat different kinds of food, and each one is adapted to eat its own certain kind of food. Some eat cactus, some eat insects, some eat seeds, and as you can see, they have really varying beak structures depending on, you know, whatever kind of thing they eat, which is, of course, how they're adapted to meet their ecosystem. Um, here are some bullet points. Uh, part of the idea behind natural selection is that all organisms produce more offspring than are going to live. In nature, everything wants to kill you all the time. And so you're going to have animals that die. And because uh, you have the possibility of mutation, you also have the possibility of variation. And so within each species, you could have a whole big range of variation of changes that are going to occur. Some of these variations are bad, some of these variations are neutral, but a very few of them are good. And those are the ones that increase the chance of an organism to survive. And if you have a good trait, there's more chance that you will survive to reproduce. And over a long, 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 long period of time, these good traits are passed on that lead to genetic changes in species over a whole. And again, this takes time. This isn't something that happens overnight snap. Uh, we did the paper airplane lab today where your, your changes occurred like over a single generation. That's not really realistic. It doesn't work that quickly. Here's a great example that Katie did. Um, over time, you have crickets that started to look more leafy. They can hide from predators better like that. It's like you have um, carnivorous predators that aren't going to want to eat leaves, but in this case, the crickets look like the leaves. This is what they look like now, and this is a good way to be. Um, that brings us to artificial selection. We talked about this with dogs in class, and I get to talk a little bit more. Dogs have been domesticated for like 14,000 years of human history, and they started off as wolves. Basically, all dogs did. They uh, hung around human camps. The, uh, the humans took them in, and they bred them for certain traits. Maybe they wanted them to be able to hunt well. Maybe they wanted them to be able to herd animals well. Well, maybe they just wanted them as companion animals, like our little useless teacup poodles that we have nowadays. And today we have hundreds of different subspecies of dogs that all descended from wolves. Check this out. Corn. That's what corn originally looked like. Now it looks like this. That's through selective breeding. 
carrots didn't used to be orange. Originally, carrots were purple. They were orange because people liked them better that way. And they were just bred to look orange. Here's some Percherons, big old huge horses that do heavy work. All right. That's what I got for a natural artificial selection. Uh, later on this week, there's going to be another uh, video come up about um, human involvement in our ecosystems. And so I will see you back there then. Have fun.